Hi beautiful lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about creating an ancestral altar and also about ancestral archetypes. So creating an altar is something very intimate, very beautiful, but also very sacred. And to me, like this sacred ritual really helps me ground myself, but also is a beautiful creative sacred space that I can honor my ancestors. So um, I will be sharing some of the ingredients and the elements I will be putting on my altar, but I won't be showing it because again, it's very intimate. And this is something that I've learned and discovered when I was in Mexico for Dia de los Muertos, which is celebrated on 31st of October, not only in Mexico, but throughout all the Mexican communities all around the world. And last week when I went to the Volkenkunde Museum in Leiden, there I saw many beautiful cultures being represented, but also talking about how this ancestral honoring is part of so many cultural DNA. And the beautiful thing about this is that ancestors are the intermediaries in between God, the universe and yourself. Which to me is beautiful because in the end our ancestors are also God's creation. So for me, like I see it part as a big whole and me honoring my ancestors, also honoring the God in them or the universe or the source, whatever you feel more comfortable talking about. So besides the ancestral altar, I also wanted to talk to you about ancestral archetypes. So archetypes is a term that was coined by Carl Jung, which was a Swiss psychoanalyst. And this archetypes is like a way for us to conceptualize this complex reality, but to make us help understand the experiences we go through. And a lot of it is told through storytelling. And he discovered that many archetypes are similar throughout many cultures all around the world. So even though an archetype is very individual, it's very universal at the same time. So he coined 12 archetypes. I know like there's one called Explorer, the Artist, the Outlaw. So there are many different ones that he already coined. But in my, in my case, I wanted to share my ancestral archetypes because like, it didn't necessarily fit the 12 types I already mentioned. But I feel like they're still very personal and universal at the same time. So I wanted to share the archetypes that I see in my grandma and in my dad. So my grandma Maninga, to me like she was a saint and my dad was the complete opposite. So I love both of them, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything because like for example, my dad, his colleagues didn't like him. So I'm not gonna say that he was a saint, but because he was the opposite and I had my grandma on one side, one side helped me understand and also forgive the other so that I can reap the benefits and the rewards from it. And I've done a lot of forgiveness work and I've long come to a point where I'm super grateful that my dad was who he was because I wouldn't be able to be who I am. I wouldn't be able to have learned so many lessons if he wasn't this damaged evil person. And um, for me in this case, my dad was my creator and my grandma as well even though she wasn't my direct creator. So for me, it was really important to see what was the lesson and value in this. And, um, and to take away the labels good and bad, because like, you know, a lot of times when we start digging into our ancestral lineage, depending on who they, on who they were, it can feel like opening a Pandora's box. So a lot of people are afraid of it because they feel like a lot of pain, grief and suffering will come out and it can and probably will. But remember, at the bottom of the Pandora's box, there was hope. So what I want to invite you to do is like study your ancestors, not only so you can like process the pain, so you don't stay imprisoned in this cycle of grieving, but also to get to the bottom of it where there's hope. Because once you get to the bottom of it, you're empowered to make a different choice, but also you educate yourself so you can make a different decision you can create a different reality. Because in the end of it, we are co-creators with the universe, creating our reality, but it's important that we know which is our part. Not only our part, but also what is ancestral trauma or like the ancestral gifts that we inherited. Because a lot of times I feel like when we talk about our ancestors, it's like in a very traumatic, damaging way. And for me, in my case, it's both. So for me, it was important to both acknowledge the pain and to process it, but also see the beauty in what they have. So it's like both of like a grave and a treasure chest at the same time. But I'm super happy and grateful. I looked at him because like it helps understand me. And I feel like once you know yourself, 
you know others, you know how to navigate this world in a like much more empowered way. So now let's look at the elements I will be adding to my ancestral altar and I will be talking it through it. So these are some of the things I will be adding to my altar and these are pictures of my grandma Maninha. And we didn't call her grandma, we called her Maninha. And my grandma was a saint. And I'm not saying this because she was my grandma. Really, like, she did so many things. And she not only talked the talk, but also walked the walk. And would always teach us to bless those who hurt you. And there's so many stories that I not, cannot necessarily share here. But things she did. And, like, every time I feel like I have to choose the higher world, I would ask myself, what would my niña do? Because that inspires me to live my highest self. So that's why I also got this um, Vela Santa, so Sagrado Corazón de Maria, who was uh, Jesus' mom. I also have the Rosario because my grandma was a very religious woman and she would pray a lot every Sunday. She would go to the church and she would also have altar with the Holy Fatima. And this Fatima is a present I got from my cousin who now lives in London. She grew up in Portugal and she went to Fatima and got me this and sent me this. So I'm really happy and grateful she did because this is something I always have somewhere in my house, whether it's in the living room, the room, not only to remind me of the Holy Fatima, but also of my grandma. And with the Rosario, my grandma also had one. She had a big Fatima and then with a big Rosario on top of it. And what I like about this one is that it also has uh, roses in it. And to me, like the roses symbolizes not only the beauty, but that every rose comes with its set of thorns. And even though like I consider my grandma saying that like, she had to deal with so much shit. And... Um, like, even, so, even though for me, my grandma is the rose, a lot of thorns were thrown at her. So even if you are a good person and you do good, there's also always thorns and people who try to harm you or like derail you in some shape or form, no matter what. And um, then if you look at my grandma, this was basically her uniform. Like she would have a headscarf, she would wear shirts. Then this, um, I don't know how to call this in English, but then she would have pockets in them. She would always wear a skirt. Like, even though in when she would come to Europe, she would have uh, pants on. Like, in Cape Verde, I never saw her wearing any. And then she would always smoke the pipe. So, that's why I also have the pipe. And the thing is, like, my grandma would smoke fresh tobacco leaves. So, not the processed one with all the chemicals. And I call this the peace pipe because like my grandma was all about peace. And traditional tobacco has been used by American Indians nations for centuries as a medicine with cultural spiritual importance. But they also say that in many teachings, the smoke that is burned from this tobacco also has the purpose of carrying thoughts and prayer to the spirit world or the creator. And to me, like she would always smoke her tobacco. Like do you, I would always see during lunch and at night uh, when she would watch her novella. And um, it was like her sacred ritual. And they always say like people who live up to live a hundred, they always have one thing that they indulge in. And like for me, like her smoking her pipe was one of her indul indulgences. And I also have like this fish because that to me it's also symboliz symbolizes her faith and her Christianity. Then I have this enamel pin called Bullshit Remover because my mo grandma was always about being of service. Every time I would see her at my auntie's bakery, she would be cleaning and not because she had to, but because she wanted to make herself useful and help others. And she did it by using her talents and her gifts, which was cleaning. So there was nothing like belittling about it or like in fear or anything like for her like it was her way of being a service and of being a servant of God by cleaning and um, you know bullshit removal also includes people whether it's in the family and other people so it's a mix of things and um, my grandma also used to make and sell clothes so I inherited my gift for fashion design from her and for me like this not only symbolizes the fashion design but also being a creative creator whether it's birthing babies birthing ideas birthing projects you are the creator of your faith and to me like this is symbolizing of her not only being this type of creator but in many many ways 
Then I also have this card, which is from the Self-Care Oracle card deck, Connect with your womb. And the reason I put it in here is because we carry a lot of ancestral trauma in our wombs and in our reproductive organs, because not just for women. And um, a lot of ancestral trauma is stored here. And if you think about it, it makes sense because this is like the epicenter of creation, of birth. But a lot of us are not birthing anything new. We're birthing karmic cycles. We're renewing every step of the way. We're renewing the same ancestral trauma that we don't want to relive. In some kind of way, we feel stuck. So we keep birthing the same things over and over again. So um, connecting with your womb is not only about you connecting with yourself, but also connecting with your ancestor and seeing if there's anything there that you need to release and let go of so you can birth a new reality, a new and better you, something that is much greater. And so you can become your ancestors' wildest dreams because you have to remember that no matter what they went through, they want the best for you. So, and in, especially in their highest form, because in their highest form, they're God's creation. So they want the best for you. They want you, you to succeed, for you to become your highest potential, for you to be at peace, for you to be loved and supported. And they're doing this from the spiritual plane. And connecting with you is one of the ways you can do this as well. Then I also have this headscarf. So as I said before, my grandma would always wear this headscarf. And this one is an Emilio Pucci headscarf. So a lot of people will look at the headscarf and look, oh, this is a high fashion brand. So that means it's valuable. But for me, like my grandma is valuable. And for me, she's my high fashion ancestor because the value that a lot of people would put to material things, I put them on my grandma. Because um, even though physically our relationship has ended because death ends a physical relationship, it never stops because spiritual will always connect it. And I remember even back then when we would call and I would tell her like, you know, grandma, even though we're far in distance, we're closing our hearts because our love and thoughts connect us. And that was valid back then. And it's still the case. So this is a valuable scarf because my grandma is valuable and there's no amount of there's no amount you can put on her value because like, she's priceless. And for me, like I feel so blessed to feel her presence and her guidance. And I hope you can connect the same way with your ancestors as well, because it's truly a gift and it's something that we can cherish and honor in our everyday lives. So whereas I consider my grandma a saint, my dad was the complete opposite when he was alive. So um, he was a troubled man and he had a lot of trauma that he couldn't let go of. So you could say that, you know, if you look at Lucifer, which is the fallen angel, he fell from heaven and he basically fell from grace. And I see it as a metaphor for his existence. Like he fell from grace from the peace and the love of God. So he was living in his own hell because like he couldn't let go of the trauma of the past. And um, even though like I suffered a lot, I did a lot of forgiveness work and I'm super grateful that he was my dad because I would have never been able to learn so much if he wasn't the person that he was. I learned forgiveness, compassion, emotional resistance, passion, strength, so much. I mean, I could do a whole video just about the valuable life lessons that I learned thanks to my dad and his drinking problem because he had a drinking problem. So if I look at the meta, like the ancestral archetypes for my dad, one is the sailor. So this uh, shell symbolizes it. It kind of also symbolizes him because he had a tough exterior. He was a hard shell, but if you put your hair close, you can hear the sea. So which means to me, like, even though somebody can have, have a hard shell, sometimes you have to lean in closer to listen to their story, to see what comes out, because you cannot judge a book by its cover and you cannot judge a shell by its hard exterior. Like there's so much more to the story. And um, so he, he like, I mean, like so many, if I look at all the men in my family, like they were all sailors or like connected to the water, the ocean in some shape or form. So that was like one of his first adventures and ways to explore the world. And one of my dad's dream that he was never able to fulfill was to become a pilot. 
so I like my love for traveling definitely comes from all the men in my family and I have to say like I'm probably the first woman who's traveling so much because usually like it's almost like this privilege reserved only for the men in my family and I was like hell no like I'm traveling as well I love to travel and I remember when I was little my dad got me this little booklet which, which looked like a little passport which had so many flags and the capitals and then he would always ask me what is the capital of that country in that country so like my desire and urge to travel like original like from really young and uh, it's also thanks to him and for example like he was never able to fulfill his dream to become a pilot which reminds me every day that it's so important to continue on this journey to fulfill your dreams because like that and alone is already a journey that I'm grateful for even though it's like really hard at times and of course there's many doubts and moments I want to give up but then I remind myself of my dad who wanted to become pilot but never had a chance so then I remind myself how grateful I am to be even able to attempt to realize my dreams so that was one of his first experiences and at a very young age my dad had to go to Angola to fight as a soldier and um, for, for example, like when they went there, they would give them injections so they wouldn't feel fear. And then at the end, they also gave them injections so they would forget everything about uh, what happened. So they basically like they drug them to become like these killing machines. And my dad also almost lost his arm when he was there. And when he came back, like all of the things he experienced like is enough for him to get PTSD and a lot of men do, but because like they're this victim of this limited construction of what a man can be, like he's not able to share his emotional or his pain and like to seek help, which is why like he became this wounded soldier and not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually. And he was never able to really release this pain from the past. So he was trapped in this own hell of the past and he couldn't get out of it so because of this PTSD he developed a drinking problem and to me like he used uh, used to drink a lot of beer and wine and he would get drunk he ended up in the hospital a lot of times and for me like when somebody chooses a liquid drug his drug of choice because like he is drowning in his own pain and he cannot get out of it he's drowning 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 and um so the thing is, like, even though on the inside he was suffering, on the outside people would see this really angry man. No, I mean, that had his work, nobody liked him. Everybody hated him, which is why I choose this bottle. Like, this is a liquor from Scandinavia. It's called Dragon Fire. My dad would literally spit fire like a dragon. So um, even though, like, it's seen as this mystical creature, a majestic creature, it was not something regard something positive. So um, he couldn't let people in because he was too much in his pain. And um, which is why, like, uh, if you would look at how he was, he was very much trapped in his pain. He didn't show any emotions. Whenever I would cry, he would say, like, oh, you're being so weak. For me, like, it's super important to show my emotions, to digest them and to, like, really process them. Because for me, like, my dad is a teacher in a worst case scenario but also like a possible pitfall for me so if i don't share my emotions i could become trapped of this never-ending loop where you become like the wounded soldier then i also have for example these are this picture and this, this is him this is him like you could almost call him like disco dad in these pictures and um, so my dad was an immigrant, so that's one of his archetypes. I wasn't sure if I would choose immigrant or construction worker, but then again, like immigrant encompasses everything that it stands for. So he was a construction worker, and I remember him and my mom always emphasizing the fact, like always tell people that your dad was a construction worker and your mom used to clean. I was like, of course, but a lot of people, like I know, there's like sometimes they feel ashamed, and I'm like, I'm super proud of who they were, and especially because like you know, an immigrant is a hard worker, is somebody who doesn't conform to something that is not in alignment with his values. And my dad was super proud to be Cape Verdean. So that's something like, you know, this passion I have for my culture. I have it from both my parents. But because my dad used to talk m not as much as my mom, like for me, like that's one of the marks that I really re remember from him. 
and uh, then I also have this little enamel pin so for me this symbolizes the yin and yang so there's always something bad in the good and there's always something good in the bad and um, in order for you to self-actualize and to become whole you have to embrace both your shadow and your light so they can work in unison in this tender embrace like in this enamel pin so for me like you know a lot of times we label things as good and bad instead of just as experiences so for me it was really important to like not only forgive him but like try to see what are the lessons that i needed to learn from this and one of the things is like you're both so there's not there's no point in like rejecting a part of yourself embrace both sides because that's the only way you can become whole then I also have this little one that looks like a skeleton with a rose. So, um, I mean, a lot of people can be alive, but they're like walking dead people. And like with my dad, like he was physically there, but emotionally he was not available. And um, even though the rose symbolized the beauty in my grandma, with my dad it was mostly the thorns because like it felt more like a painful experience than a good one. And I feel, I feel like in a weird way like the relationship with my dad now that he's passed away feels way better and i can really feel his presence and his guidance and um also in a way that he couldn't be when he was alive then my passion for writing comes from his side of the family so i didn't know like my dad didn't write or i don't think he even read books but um, on my mom's side, like my mom and my godfather, luckily, they've always encouraged us to read like spiritual books, self-improvement books. But on my dad's side, there were people who were writers and I love to write, but never knew where it came from. So it comes from his side. And then even though my dad wasn't a footballer, I also considered a footballer one of his and one of my ancestral archetypes and one thing that symbolizes him because you know, the mindset of a footballer is what you need to win. And um, as I was mentioning before, like when he was young and he had to fight for the Portuguese army in Angola, Cristiano Ronaldo's dad was the same. So a lot of times I get ancestral, ancestral messages from my dad through Cristiano Ronaldo when he talks about his dad, because he dad, his dad experienced the same thing. When he came back from the army, he developed a drinking problem, which I think is caused by PTSD. So watching Cristiano Ronaldo's documentary was very insightful and healing, because like at some point I was having this self-pity party, was like, no, I'm too damaged, etc. And then um, after watching his documentary, I was like, no, if he was able to become the best footballer in the world, because he had the right mindset. So I need to study how a footballer thinks in order to win. And personally, I love football. And uh, I know like a lot of times, like I get my ancestral messages from my dad, especially through footballers, like what is documentary, but especially Ronaldo, because it's the mindset of a footballer that I need to win. And you know, a lot of times um, our dads help us develop the right mindset but also high standards and i feel like through this ancestral language he's able to communicate messages that he wasn't able to do when he was alive so i feel very blessed and grateful to be able to have this connection but for me like you know whereas uh, my my grandma was very religious for me my footballs my dad's religion was football and i see a lot of similarities be between football and religion because both can bring out the best and the worst in people it's it like it unites people of all backgrounds people come together they dress a certain way people normally go on sunday to football and um it can really bring out the best in people so um yeah that's why i wanted to add this football here as well so that was the video for today. I hope it was insightful and also brought value to your perspective. If you have any ancestral archetypes of yours that you would like to share, please share them below. And um, thanks again for watching and I will be seeing you in my next video.